Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, service is month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on start a podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Mia Poppy on the line, and she's managing partner over at the law firm of Poppy & Associates. Mia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Adam. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk about the imbalance of financial resources during divorce. Um, But before we do that, let's go a little bit further into what you're doing at your firm. Tell us a little bit more about the law firm of Poppy & Associates, please. Oh, thank you. So the law firm of Poppy & Associates is a woman-led law firm operating in in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm not only the managing partner, Adam, I'm also the founding partner. So 12 years ago, as I was doing my take two in life, a single mother of three boys, I ran away from North Carolina and came to Midtown Manhattan in the best time to do that, in 2008. So Mm. I was unable to secure employment in the legal space, and so I opened my firm, and to my surprise, I found that there was a huge market of people getting ready to go through divorces who really wanted someone with deep life experiences, deep compassion, and, you know, most of all, that Southern magic. Wow, what an amazing story. And one of the things I love about your story is, you know, uh, 2008, a lot of times people will focus on some of the hardships that happened during that time, but I always have to remind people, I'm like, you know, a lot of businesses were started in 2008 that were thriving, and, 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 and they only started because of what was going on during that time. Had you secured, you know, your position, then you may not have your business. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, though. I don't know. Um, it just depends. Absolutely. But <laughs> Absolutely, Adam. 2008, even though it was, uh, you know, it was a tough time, it was the best thing that could have happened to me because I was positioned where I had to do something, you know, in order to feed my children. And I started a business and knock on wood, 12 years later, that business in Midtown Manhattan is successful and thriving. Oh my gosh, that is uh, that is so powerful. I love this, Mia. Um, so let's. Uh, I do want to switch it up a bit, though. I do want to get into today's topic. So the imbalance of financial resources during divorce. Obviously, you're an expert in this. I mean, this is what you work in for many, many years. I mean, where do you want to start with this topic? Well, so you know, I work in the New York market, and in in the market that I work in, Adam, there there's lots of money, there's lots of resources, and so the imbalance that is introduced into the divorce process because of that imbalance of money is is enormous. And and it's larger, the scale and the impact is larger than we would normally think. So Adam, for example, um, not only in New York, but um, it's my understanding in every state, there is a statutory provision where the money spouse pays some part of or all of the council fees, the big fees, for the non-money staff. Hmm. And so we all like to kind of sit back and think, oh, okay, that balances the playing field. So if you are a spouse who maybe has dedicated his or her life to taking care of the children, you'll be able to get adequate legal representation in a divorce proceeding because the judge will more likely than not order your money spouse pay counsel fees. So, Adam, that 
that is far from the remedy to the imbalance when there is large monetary imbalance in a divorce. So today, I just want to briefly share with you two two events, two two clients that I represented, where they were both the non-money spouse. And so, you know, one of the things that being the money spouse can get you is it can afford you the opportunity to purchase a really rich fairy tale. Yes, hmm. Adam, a fairy tale. Hmm. And so when you have money, usually what comes with money um, are connections and other friends with money. So while the non-money spouse's legal fees per se may be getting paid, you have the money to buy a supporting cast, if you're the money spouse, to create a huge fairy tale. Now, the problem with this in the divorce context, as in life, is when we're hearing a fairy tale, Adam, we all kind of know that the story is untrue. Judges right. know that the other lawyers know it. Your friends, when you repeat the story, they know it. So we all kind of know it's untrue. But the problem with fairy tales, especially in the, the divorce context, is that while we know the story is untrue, the story is so compelling Wow! judges want to go with the story because everybody mm-hmm. likes a good story, right, Adam? Of course. And so, you know, two of the um, cases that I've worked on, and, and both were unfortunate, and, and, you know, it turned out that both had a happy ending, and I, and I like to attribute those happy endings to my um, my advocacy, but one case in particular I'm thinking about is I had a client and she was the non money spouse. Her her husband, who's now her ex husband, was the money spouse, a hedge funder, not only a hedge funder, the son of a hedge funder. So there there was deep, deep pockets, long money. And so this this couple had children. They had um two young children and the husband, because of his resources, did this incredible, um, what we call venue or forum shopping. So he said to my client, oh, life in Manhattan, this isn't pure enough. We shouldn't raise the children here. Let's move upstate New York. She kind of goes along with it. They move upstate New York. They're in this new house in upstate New York in a small county. And the smaller the county, the more somebody can potentially influence a judicial outcome because judges are elected officials, right? Mm -hmm. So they relocated, and it it was not even three months after they relocated that he pulled the big trigger. Um, He had a team that concocted a story uh, regarding her being mentally ill and being a danger to the children, and all of it was untrue, but the story was so rich, and the story had... Um, psychologists and the story had psychiatrists that were all amening this fairy tale. And so, you know, we had an extensive and hard period in court uh, with my client and, you know, the threat of her children being removed from her. And um, the story was compelling. And so the judge went with the story. It took a year. um, But after a year, you know, even the best fairy tales must come to an end. And so that one did. But the the thing that money bought in that case is it bought the husband the ability to forum shop. That means when you can get a different court, you can go into a different county, sometimes even a different state, and get a court that might be more easily influenced by you. So that's, you know, one of the imbalances that money can bring in because with money, you can do that. Wow, what a what a story! And I can see it happening, and you can see how calculated it was, right? Like it was just so calculated, but it's still the fairy tale. Like it's just like all oh, this, this, these uh, just happened to happen, right? It just exactly, and again, the story was so outrageous. But it was a compelling story. It was a compelling story, and it was a compelling story being put by, forth by a successful hedge funder with lots of money and, you know, 
people like money. That's even a a better fairy tale. So, you know, it all washed out in the end. Um, I was able to, you know, successfully overcome this fairy tale, and I was able to maneuver the court back to reality. And I'm, I'm pleased to say, I'm so pleased to say, Adam, that my client had a wonderful outcome. And so that, that's an example. Another example of, of the imbalance that money introduces was, again, another spouse with deep pockets, and that spouse created this incredible story of the mom getting ready to, you know, abduct the children and take the children to a country that was a non-Hague signatory country, and because in that case, you know, the father was the one that had substantial assets. He purchased fake passports um, and alleged that my, my client, who had did not have the money or the resources or the connections, to come up with a fake passport. Because a fake passport, uh, Adam, is a very sophisticated um, document because to get a passport, you know, all countries do something called biometrics. Like, you got to show up. There's a fingerprint that has to be taken. You know, a passport is not like making a fake driver's license. So, mm-hmm. um, he had fake, fake passports that he said my client had purchased. And um, it was, a, again, it was a compelling story. The judge wow. bid on it, even though, in reality, my client was a very, very, very simple, sweet um grounded person who would have never had the connection to create a fake passport. And and on the face, that was known. Um, But still yet, the story was good. It had the international flair. It had kind of the James Bond flair of her being at the (laughs) airport and crossing the um, lines of many countries. Again, a fairy tale. The judge went with it. But again, some of the best laid fairy tales come to an end in the divorce process, and that one did also. And again, I like to think it came to an end because of the advocacy provided by my office to this client oh my gosh. in a horrible situation. What an amazing story. And let me tell you something. I could listen to these all day because I know you're just barely scratching the surface, but we're about out of time um, for this episode, Mia. So that being said, uh, if somebody is listening to this and they want more information on the law firm of Poppy and Associates and how to work and connect with you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out? So the best way to contact me is, you know, through my website, um, it's www.nylawsa, as in Sam Apple, dot com, or you can call my office directly at 212-792-9501, or you can look me up on the internet, Mia Poppy, P-O-P-P-E, Esquire, and, and Adam, I would just say, if you're in New York, I'd love to speak with you um, regarding representation. Um, if you're outside of New York and you'd like to speak with me or someone from my team in regards to coaching you on the divorce process or coaching you on how to get through the divorce process, we also are able to do that for uh, for, for for our clients who are not within New York. We only go into courts and practice law in the state of New York, but we do provide coaching on the divorce process to people outside of New York. That's awesome. Well, Mia, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about all the great work that you're doing over at the law firm of Poppy and Associates. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Mia, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you, Adam.